about radio. Hi guys, uh, I thought you might find this interesting, but uh, looking at a, a bunch of batteries here and um, when a battery goes flat, obviously if you measure the voltage, the voltage is reduced. Um, but there's something else going on in the battery and that is its internal resistance increases. So um, you can think of a, a battery um, as you normally sort of draw this thing and uh, there's the voltage across there. Um, but there's this notion of internal resistance and it's just as if the battery has got a resistor in series with it in uh, um, uh, in in the, the package there and that resistance is distributed throughout the battery so uh, each um, individual cell you can think of having a, a series uh, resistor in it so it, it's not a resistor it's uh, it's a, a resistance that takes place in the cell and uh, that resistance gets in the way Typically what we used to say was if the internal resistance of a, of a battery was um, uh, say somewhere between 10 ohms and 100 ohms it would be okay for a transistor radio, so a little battery like this. Um, but it, it, uh, an internal resistance of much more of, than uh, 100 ohms and you might as well chuck the battery away or, or replace it. And um, it won't be exactly the same resistance for all batteries and even batteries from a different batch can, uh, can vary on what its um, uh, internal resistance might be. So it's not an exact science. There's all sorts of different ways of, no, well, there's a couple of different ways of measuring the internal resistance. But I'm going to show you something that um, might be helpful. Then the reason that um, I'm doing this is I've got a bunch of batteries for my uh, digital camera and um, uh, they're the, the rechargeable version of an AA battery so not this one but like that and uh, I've got a bunch of them and some of them are really quite ancient um, many years old but uh, they still have a, a good internal resistance some of them are not so good so th they'll be thrown out so you can't just put a meter across the battery and measure the resistance but you can make a comparison. So um, what we can do is we can um, uh, take the, the battery and uh, put the voltmeter across it and measure its open circuit voltage and we call that V1. Uh, then if we place a 100 ohm resistor across there and, and measure the uh, resistance, uh, sorry, measure the voltage across that resistance, so that resistor will be drawing some current, uh, then we have uh, V2. So we uh, measure the open circuit voltage and the loaded voltage. I say, yeah, typically that would be uh, a 100 ohm resistor. Nothing magic about the 100 ohms, it's just uh, a sensible size or value of resistor to use for a battery like this. So what you can do then is you take the V1 value minus the V2 value, divide that by V2 and then multiply that answer uh, by the resistance. And um, uh, what I've got here is uh, a, a little resistor and that should be an 82 ohm uh, but its uh, its value, like a lot of carbon resistors, isn't what it says it should be. And um, just wait for the meter to wake up. And you'll see it's actually 95.7 ohms. So I'm going to call that 96 ohms for, uh, uh, for what I'm doing here. Um, so we'll put R equals 96 ohms. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll come back to that formula, but what I'm going to do is just run through um, these batteries and just check their internal resistance. Uh, so we're going to be on the uh, DC voltage scale. 
So what we'll do first, let's move those down to there. Hope I'm getting all of this in shot. Um, so uh, what have we got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five batteries. Um, so we've got number uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And then we'll take the V1 reading for each of them. So now I'm just going with the meter straight across the, um, uh, the battery. That's 9 .2 .2. 8 .2. 8.62. 2 .2. 2 .2. 2 .2. 2 .2. 2.30. Why did I chuck him away now? 9.41 and 8.53 okay now what I'm going to do is connect this uh, 96 ohm resistor across there and there isn't going to be enough resistance in these wires to create any problems um, okay so now we go through and we take the v, uh, v2 readings so 8.95 8.96 8.96 2.26 on the call that 2.26 if you notice the uh, the voltage was dropping and that's just the the load effect of the resistor so that's uh, that's going to be a pretty naff battery um, that's point four two That's 8.9, looking pretty solid. What is it, 8.9 what? Well, we're calling it 8.9. Um, and then this one is 8. Uh, sorry, 7.96. Okay, that's finished with that. So, um, from the the formula there for the first one uh, we've got 9.22 minus 8.95 uh, divided by V2 which is 8.95 and then we times it by the resistance which is 96 ohms times 96 and that tells us that the um, internal resistance here is 2.89 ohms. Uh, for that first one. Okay, and now uh, I'll, I'll flood through those, but I won't record it. Okay, I've uh, flogged through those now. and. Before I get any wisecracks about my ancient calculator, uh, um, I've had this calculator for years and years and years, and I must have done hundreds of thousands of calculations on it. And I see the uh, the buttons are actually uh, uh, getting uh, rounded off; they're getting smoothed off, and you can see the, the paints wearing off it. But it's a lovely calculator because it's got a, an exchange function. Um, that um, you actually swap uh, if you're doing um, uh, well, typical radio calculations you, you can swap the top and bottom line over and that's really useful uh, there's only Texas I've found that do, uh, that, do that and um, if I see another one of these on eBay I shall buy it because uh, they don't make them anymore anyway um, right let's uh, zoom in and see uh, what we've got, so we need to get the formula in just so you can 
see what it is. Okay, so in each case I've taken the open circuit voltage and the, uh, the loaded voltage and I subtracted the loaded voltage from the open circuit voltage and then I've divided that by the loaded voltage and then times it by the resistance. The resistance that I have is 96 ohms. I say if you um, if you use a 100 ohm resistor that, that would be typical for this uh, sort of thing. Uh, whatever battery, you, you can check any battery like this um, uh, but just make sure that the the resistor that you use has uh, adequate wattage. Anyway for uh, battery number one that's got an internal resistance of uh, 2.89 so we'll call it 2.3 so that's a good battery we'll keep him. Um, <laughs> battery number two has got an internal resistance of 270 ohms um, so uh, that, that, one, uh, that one can go. If we just stop for a moment and uh, look at that uh, battery number two, let's just take in what we've seen there. It's a 9 volt battery and uh, the surface charge, that sort of top layer of charge that it has, uh, is 8.62 volts and uh, when you work that out that's actually 95.7% of its full 9 volts, uh, so it's full service charge. Uh, so you might be forgiven for thinking, well that's not too bad, yeah, um, you know, it, it, it looks quite good. But when we loaded it with the 96 ohm resistor, uh, that voltage fell to 2.26 volts. Uh, and that's across the, let's say, the 96 ohm resistor. So we've lost uh, 6.36 volts somewhere. And that voltage has been dropped across the internal resistance of the battery. So I think that just shows the, the real significance of the, uh, uh, the nature of internal resistance. Uh, the voltage is still in the battery, but we're losing it across the internal resistance because it's, a, it's an, a, an old battery that's not very good. Um, so you, you can say the state of charge is reflected in the internal resistance or the internal resistance reflects the state of charge of a battery. But this is clearly a bad battery. Um, battery number three uh, has a, an internal resistance of 429 ohms. So again, that's uh, clearly uh, well dead. <laughs> um, Battery number four was uh, 5.5 ohms, so uh, that's uh, that's a keeper, keep him. And then um, battery number five uh, was uh, 6.7 ohms. So again, that's that's a good battery to keep. I say this is not an exact science. Um, if you look on the internet I'm sh uh, at uh, battery internal resistance, you'll you'll find all sorts of useful information. I can't tell you um, what defines a good battery of a given type, say like an alkaline battery as opposed to this sort of um, lead acid batteries or, or things like that. But certainly for um, uh, the, the batteries that were like this, the old uh, lead acid um, batteries or zinc, um, uh, sorry, zinc carbon um, batteries, um, if if a, a nine volt battery was um, somewhere between ten and a hundred ohms internal resistance, you'd expect that to be able to fire up a, uh, a little transistor radio. Um, anyway, I've got a whole bunch of uh, rechargeable batteries. I'm going to check out now, and um, let's say I've put this video under. Um, about radio, but obviously it equally applies to uh, to batteries for uh, for any use, including your car battery. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.